Hey folks, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley, and this morning as I drive into the courthouse, I'm going to talk to you about trial. That's right, trial. So many people contact me. I want to go to trial. I'm innocent. Prove my innocence. It wasn't me. It was the other guy. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm just innocent, and, and, and I need someone to talk for me. So let's talk about trial. The first thing you need to know about trial is that they're rare. Like rare like a steak, pink, right? They're, they're so rare that 92 to 96% of cases throughout the United States, people are either pleading guilty or no contest, either to the original charges or to reduce charges, sometimes even increase charges. So you have to realize that trials are rare. So when a trial is rare, when do you go to trial? Like, how do you do it if you didn't do it? The first thing that you need to know is that there's a risk. There's a high risk, high reward, right? If you win, freedom, right? If you lose, you're incarcerated. You're going to go to jail or prison. Now, maybe not on a first time misdemeanor. Any felony charge, consider yourself you know, you're, you're in prison, all right? So you as the client, right, you the, you're the one who the charges are brought against. You need to decide whether or not you're ready to take that risk. And you need to determine whether or not you're ready to take that risk with your attorney, with your lawyer, with your criminal defense team. You need to know what the discovery says. You need to know what the depositions read like. What are the transcripts? Right? What are the conflicts in the case? What's missing as far as the elements of the crime? You need to know these things and they don't come through omniscience, right? You're not omniscient. You have to ask your defense attorney. And if your defense attorney is like, ah, you know, that's not the guy or that's not the gal. You need to make sure that they're doing their work, that they're passionate. And I don't mean ride their butt. I don't mean you know, be a nag, but you kind of got to be a little bit of a nag because if your defense attorney is not giving you your discovery, your videotapes, your audio, your CADs, right? Not giving you copies of transcripts, not sitting down and going over a strategy to win a trial, you got problems and you need to make sure that you don't risk your life. You don't risk your freedom because some guy is, or some gal is taking it lightly, not taking it seriously. So what do you, what is your attorney supposed to do? What do I do before my cases? <clears throat> I kill with kindness. I I show this prosecutor weaknesses. I try to meet with them. I talk to the first I start with the case intake and I show them weaknesses in the case. I proffer your side. If the case gets filed, I go over things with the new prosecutor. I take depositions, I get all of the evidence. I look for things that are lacking. I look for conflicts because that's how one finds reasonable doubt. That's how you win a trial. But the most important thing is that your client is on board, that you folks, you make the decision because trial is a risk. It's a, you, it's a, it's, it's, it's genuine. It's, you have the best opportunity to prove your innocence, to have your day in court, to win. But my goodness, if you lose, you're, you're going to prison. So you all know that, you know, that I talk about God, I talk about prayer. And not only do I say a prayer and I say, you know, God, give me the strength to, to give my best, to be articulate, to, to really understand the facts of the case, to look for the weaknesses, to do my best to help this individual that has hired me to help them. But I also ask him to give me power to smash to smash my opponent, right? I want the passion and the dedication to stay up late at night, to work the weekend, to get through it, so that when I go to trial, I obliviate the other side. I don't wanna just win by a little bit. I want the jury to come back and go, not guilty and I can't even imagine. I want the judge to look at the prosecutor like, what were you doing? I want the prosecutor to look at the police officers like, what did you do? Why did you put me in this position? I want witnesses to just shake their heads and like, I want the whole system to be turned upside down. Now, 
that's a big prayer. That's a big ask, right? But I find that when I beg for mercy, when I go to prosecutors generally and say, hey, look at this, a lot of them, not all of them, because there's a lot of great prosecutors, but a lot of them, they're lazy. They ignore me. They ignore other defense attorneys. They'll get to it. They're too busy. Their docket's too big. They're, they have to do trial, whatever, whatever. So I want to make sure that the next time I have a case with them and I show them things that are legitimate and I'm going to, that they never want to go to trial with me again, that they say, you know what, man, that, that guy's on top of it. I want him that them to know that my opinion means something. I'm not just telling them that my client's innocent to say it's innocent. I, as a defense attorney, need to be a little bit of objective and recognize a winner from a winner and a winner from a loser, right? I need to be able to say that. I can't say, hey, my client gave a confession. He had, you know, he there was a warrant issued based on confidential informants. He had, uh, and then the, the police raided the place. They found... They found, you know, 500 plants and, you know, 110 pounds of marijuana. They also found cocaine. There were machine guns at the place. Uh, and then the client gave a, a full confession. Yeah, I'm not really battling um, the and, and setting a trial for that and telling a prosecutor that they're crazy and, hey, look at this. But very often I have cases, and I'll give you an example. I have a case that has 10 witnesses. But I don't take the deposition of 10 witnesses to start with. I take the deposition of one. And I think of it like a domino. I think that if I can get what I need out of that one witness, that it'll fall over and it'll hit the other dominoes, right? And I'll bowl a strike, right? There's 10 pins when bowling, right? If I hit the first pin just the right way, it knocks down the other nine pins. So I do that. I kill with kindness. I show the prosecutor the weakness. It's not an adversarial process, right? It's not, even though when I go to trial, it's different. But in the beginning, it's not adversarial. Hey, Bill, hey, Sue, hey, John, this is what I got. Let me show you some weaknesses. I'd really like to, you know, to get you to dismiss this case or do something with this case. I want you to work with me on this case. And a lot of them will go, hey, you know, I, I see that. And geez, no, I don't want to go, man, I don't want to prosecute. And then there's some folks that are thick-headed, that don't listen, that they're a product of, of, of having too much power. Um, but most of all, just laziness, where they don't return phone calls, that they don't look at the depots, they don't do anything. And those are the, those are the folks that, in my opinion, you know, when I've done videos where you know the woman shows a little bit of extra leg or cleavage to win a case when she doesn't know, you know when she knows she has bad facts, I want to crush those people. I want them to be so discombobulated upstairs after they lose that they literally think about throwing in a towel and changing professions. Because innocent people should not be prosecuted. But it all starts with the client. Does the client, once he's been arrested or she's been arrested, do they want to take the risk? There's so much risk. If you lose, you're more than likely going to do time. So you have to know, but you also need to know that your attorney, that he or she is equipped, that they're willing to do the work. If you don't fight, if you're not aggressive, it's not just saying a prayer, folks. I, I'm a huge believer in God. It's not just saying a prayer and hoping for a best. It's asking God to give you the fortitude and the strength to endure, to stand up, to stand up when you're innocent and find the right attorney to fight the battle for you, to be your voice, to, to share with that jury, with that judge, what's going on and to do everything that they can to convince. That's your prayer, that's your belief in God, that the system can work, that God's power will rain down and that you will destroy your enemy. That's trial, folks, and that only happens four to six percent, if that. They they say that the average trial is, I, I think that the average amount of cases that go to trial in the United States is three percent. Think about it, three percent. That means 97 percent either, you know, like we already said, that 94 to 96, or maybe a percent gets dismissed. That's what trial is about. I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Think, ask questions, be diligent in who you hire, 
and, and ask your attorney to do his, very, his or her very best. I'm R.P. Foley. Thanks for listening.